Thanks, Tanya, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for NSAR Day 2021. Uh, my name, as Tanya said, is Dave Yetman. I am the chair of your technology committee, and it is my sincere privilege today to introduce our presenter, Stephanie Abrams from Showing Time. Stephanie actually joined the Showing Time team in January of 2018, bringing with her 18, sorry, 17 years. Don't want to give her more credit than she has, no. actually has. <laughs> Uh, 17 years of experience in the MLS uh, industry and real estate technology. She currently works on the MLS accounts management team, helping deploy showing time products in new markets, including training and ongoing support for MLS executives and staff. Welcome uh, very much today, Stephanie, and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Uh, we're very excited to be here. Um, we're excited to be a part of NSR Day and uh, in this presentation, I'm gonna show you, you know, some key tools of the trade to improve efficiency with scheduling appointments, planning your buyer tours, setting up your listings and more uh, to help you save time. And we'll also take a quick look at InfoSparks, which is an easy to use analytical tool to gain a better understanding of your local market and share your knowledge as a local market expert. And I just realized I have not started sharing my screen yet. So let me do that real quick here. Sorry about that. Here we go. And hopefully you can all see my screen. Can, okay. yes we can. Wonderful. And I am gonna turn off my video here so it's not too distracting. And we'll go ahead and get started. So here's the agenda of everything uh, we will be going over today. Um, and I'm sorry, if you can give me just one minute here, I have to make an adjustment. Okay, so sorry about that. All right, so here's the agenda of everything we'll be going over today. Uh, we'll do a quick refresher on how to access showing time, how to schedule your appointments, configure your listings, build a buyer tour using Showing Cart, one of our most popular features. Uh, I'll definitely walk you through how you can get our mobile app installed. We highly, highly recommend agents take advantage of our mobile app. There's so many great features in the app that help you stay productive on the go. Um, and, and lots more. I'm gonna show you some uh, additional tips. Uh, we'll take uh, additional, um, features, real popular features of showing time that you might not be aware of, um, again, to help save you time and, and build your business. And then we'll end things by taking a quick look at InfoSparks. With this slide, just a quick note that in today's uh, presentation, we're going to be talking about showing time, which is the agent to agent online scheduling and feedback management tool integrated right into your uh, into your MLS system. And some of you may subscribe to our other products, either Showing Time Front Desk or Showing Time Appointment Center. And just a quick note, if you do, all of our showing solutions integrate very seamlessly with one another. So all of the appointments that get scheduled um, in, uh, on, in Showing Time, they flow very seamlessly into those other products for handling as normal. All right, and then to access your Showing Time setup, you can do it a couple of different ways, right from your, uh, NSR dashboard here, you'll see showings set up and reports that'll take you right to, into the tool. And then also when you're logged into Paragon, we're gonna be located under preferences. You'll see showing time set up under there. Uh, with showing time, there's uh, two ways that you'll access the tool, either through uh, your Clarity dashboard, your, your or Paragon here, or through our mobile app. So here's the dashboard of showing time, which gives you a quick snapshot of all your showing and feedback activity. As an example, listing agents, uh, you can see here uh, any outstanding appointments needing confirmation from you. The left-hand side is how you'll navigate through the system. And we'll start by heading over to listing setup uh, to show you how to add your secure showing instructions. This is such a time saver when you add your instructions right when that property is available to show. And to add your instructions, you'll, you'll go to listing setup, which will always present you with all your active showable properties. And we'll click on one to select one here. That'll bring you to the listing worksheet for that particular property. And here's where you're gonna configure any settings 
for that particular listing. And we'll go through all these settings a little bit later on. But right now, again, I just want to focus on showing you how to add your secure showing instructions. I'll also point out uh, that the default appointment type for all listings is appointment required. You can see you can also configure your listings as a go and show or view instructions only, which of course we'll talk about. But the default's always appointment required. And with this setting, the showing agent will submit that showing request and then they'll need to wait for confirmation before they receive any showing instructions, which live a little bit further down here on the listing worksheet. So here's where you're gonna enter them in. It's a two-parter uh, access information is the first part where you're gonna put in your access details and alarm details if there are some. So for the access details, you'll see a drop down where you're gonna be able to select uh, what kind of lockbox it is and put in the code information or maybe who's gonna be providing access to the property. And then the second part of your secure showing instructions is this free text box here. These additional instructions where you can put in any helpful information for the showing agents, such as the location of the lockbox, if it's unique, there's pets in the home, uh, please take off your shoes, please leave feedback, that kind of thing. There's also this button here to add uh, predefined notes. So if you click on that button, it'll open up a new window where we have sort of a laundry list of common notes that one might add to their showing instructions, a, a lot to do with pets in the home in there. And then anytime you make changes to your listing worksheet, just a quick note that it'll always prompt you to save those changes at the top of the window. So you'll wanna make sure you do. And again, the real time saver here when you add these listing instructions in, again, right when that property is ready to show, every time you receive a showing request and you go to confirm that appointment, we're gonna populate these showing instructions so you won't have to enter them and fill them and provide them each time. All right, and next we'll talk about the four different ways you can receive your notifications from showing time. Uh, but before I do that, I definitely wanna point out something you'll wanna be mindful of. And that is that all the notifications that you receive from showing time, they are meant for your eyes only and not meant to be forwarded on to anyone for any reason. Uh, showing agents, listing agents, and sellers, your sellers, they're all gonna receive, you all receive your own dedicated notifications from showing time. The notifications are gonna contain not only the link to the appointment in question, uh, but they'll also, you'll also be able to get into your full showing time profile. So you can do other tasks as you need to do, check other notifications, confirm other appointments, uh, et cetera. Again, we do that for your convenience. So the big takeaway here, just remember not to forward those on. So email, of course, is one way you can receive your notifications. Uh, you can also opt in to text messages. Uh, you have two-way text messaging available to you. You can see how easy it is to confirm an appointment here via text. You'll notice here in the text message that you receive, there's a more info link, and you can always click on that to pull up, pull up the full appointment details as well. Showing voice is a third option, and showing voice is an automated calling system. As an example, it'll call the listing agent and read them the details of that appointment request. And the listing agent will be able to hit one to confirm, two to repeat the message, three to decline the appointment, that kind of thing. Um, or you can simply hang up and, and confirm it either by email or maybe our mobile app as well. Um, but showing voice calls, they also come from the same uh, phone number. So you can always add that phone number to your contact list and recognize those calls when they come in. Finally, there's push notifications from our mobile app. These are great because they can't be blocked for any reason. Um, always, again, highly recommend our mobile app and we'll walk through how you can easily get that installed. So those were the four different ways you can receive your notifications. And when we head over to your agent setup in a little bit, I'm gonna show you how you can set your preferences there. Uh, but next we'll dive into scheduling. Uh, we'll walk through how to schedule appointments on listings that are set to the three different ways that a listing agent can configure their listings. So there's appointment required, which we talked about is always the default, but there's also go and show and view instructions only. And we'll go through that whole workflow of a showing agent submitting that request and then seeing a listing agent confirm the appointment. So we'll start with appointment required. When you're in Paragon, and you're looking at your search results, you'll notice that uh, in this one line view here, next to all the other little icons is gonna be a showing time button. So it's blue with some orange dots, kind of looks like a clock. So you can click on that to schedule an appointment on that listing. And then if you're looking at 
a full all details report here. Again, next to all the other little icons, you'll see that showing time button as well. So clicking on that showing time button is going to bring you to the first step in scheduling that appointment. This is always going to be the first window you'll see. Top of the window uh, will show you again the property you're, you've selected to schedule on. You'll also be able to see as a showing agent what appointment type the listing is set to. So we can see this one is set to appointment required, which tells that showing agent they'll need to wait for confirmation. The bottom of the window is gonna house your contact information as a buyer's agent. Uh, and a tip for you here, this is a sticky window. So whatever you type in here last for your contact information and whatever selections you make here last, once you hit either schedule a single showing or add to showing cart, that information is gonna save here for you. Um, so if your information ever changes, uh, you can just update it here the next time you schedule your next appointment. Also, um, another tip for you here, if you want to add multiple email addresses, you certainly can. Maybe you want to add your assistant as an example. Uh, just separate multiple email addresses here with a comma and no spaces. Uh, but to continue scheduling, we'll hit that schedule a single showing button there. And because the listing is set to appointment required, we're going to see this calendar view so the showing agent can pick an available date and time. Anything on the calendar that is black is unavailable to show. Either the listing agent has set up some restrictions or the time has passed. Anything in gray here is gonna be short notice. That is the suggested lead time that has been set on the listing. And when the showing agent goes to schedule during that window of time, uh, they'll also receive a pop-up, just an alert reminding them that it is short notice. They may not be able to get confirmed in time. Stephanie? Yes. Yes, um, we do have a couple of questions from our attendees. Would you like those at the end or as we go? That is up to you. I can certainly take them now. It, okay. It, it's up to you. All right. Uh, we have, um, so we have uh, a couple of questions. Uh, okay. One from Jerry. How do we add the COVID questionnaire that needs to be completed before the showing can be confirmed? Oh, great question. And we're going to go over that. You can add okay. attachments to your listings, which we'll touch on for sure. Okay. Yes. And another question, what about one agent confirming to show, but another team member ends up showing? Can you repeat that one more time? Okay. So we have uh, one agent confirming to show, but another team member ends up doing the showing. Okay. Well, when uh, the... Uh, so as uh, you're talking the showing agent, the team member, a different team member goes to as the showing agent? I believe so. Okay. Um, when they submit the request, so this is, has to do with whether they're scheduling under a team ID or their own IDs. I'm not sure if you have team IDs um, in your market. Uh, but um, if they're scheduling appointments under a team ID, when they submit the request, they're able to put in additional text there. So uh, comments and questions. So they can certainly put in uh, at that point when they submit the request, who's going to be, who's going to be showing the property. Okay, thank you. And um, we have one, uh, one other question. Is there communication to buyers and viewing lineup and directions, etc.? as an option once appointments are confirmed? Uh, is there an option to do what, I'm sorry? Uh, just yes, is there, is there communication to buyers and viewing lineup and directions, et cetera, as an option once appointments are confirmed? Oh, I see. Um, well, when you create a buyer tour using showing cart, you're, and which we're going to go over step by step how to do that. It's definitely one of our most popular features. Uh, you're able to create that buyer tour with the driving directions and send a nice summary off to your buyer um, that they can also access on their mobile phone and, and get driving directions. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. All right, so um, to continue here, um, also the last thing I wanted to point out on this appointment uh, calendar window here is that these appointments on the calendar, uh, they don't have anything to do with the property that we're scheduling on. These are appointments that the showing agent already has confirmed or requested. And we do that for showing agents uh, so that they can see up front what they already have going on and they don't overbook themselves. But to continue scheduling, you'll choose an available date and time here from the calendar. And then the next step is to give the listing agent 
a few more details about that appointment request. So you're going to indicate the type of appointment. There's a drop down to select first time showing, second time showing, agent preview, other options as well, um, including virtual tour. Uh, we certainly in these times of COVID, we added the option to uh, request a virtual tour on behalf of your buyer. You can also optionally uh, indicate if you need to adjust what is the latest time you might be leaving the property, you can certainly do that. Again, this is the latest time you might be leaving the property. And then um, also there's, uh, you can optionally indicate your buyer's name here. This is a great reference tool. It's not gonna be seen by the listing agent. So no worries there. It's strictly a reference tool for showing agents. It's gonna allow you to pull up a nice report and showing time of all those appointments associated to your buyer. And then finally, here's where you're gonna put in uh, any questions or comments for the listing side. And again, that question about the team member, here's where you're gonna put in um, what team member is going to be showing the property. All right, and then once you hit yes, that appointment request is fired off to the listing side right away. And because the listing was set to appointment required, we're gonna see this, uh, the showing agent, excuse me, we'll see this red triangle, that lets them know they are not yet confirmed. And again, we haven't sent them any showing instructions yet. This appointment type of appointment required, again, is always set as the default. And it's uh, popular, of course, with occupied homes where you and your sellers will wanna review uh, the appointment requests first. That appointment request we just made, here's the request that goes out to the listing agent by email. So they can see all the details of that showing request right here in the body of the email message with the exception of the showing agent information but they'll see that on the next screen so to take action on this appointment request you'll hit the big blue action required button which will pull up this window here giving you all the appointment details again now you'll see the name and contact information of that showing agent so if you're the kind of agent who likes to reach out to that buyer's agent and maybe uh, tell them more about the property learn more about their buyer, you certainly can. Uh, these online uh, scheduling requests that you'll receive, you'll, you'll find that they're way better than a voicemail because they have, unlike voicemail messages, they, that might not have all the details of that request for you. These online requests will. And then when you're ready to confirm the, the appointment, if you scroll down a bit at the bottom of the window here, so this is what we talked about right at the beginning, your secure showing instructions. These are gonna be nice and pre-populated here for you if they were already filled in on the listing worksheet. If you didn't get a chance to fill them in on the listing worksheet, these are gonna be blank, of course, and you'll be able to fill them in on the fly uh, before you confirm that appointment. Also, it's important to note that if anything special or unique is going on that particular day, you can modify these instructions and they'll only apply to the appointment that you're confirming. But you'll notice the agent is able to confirm the appointment, propose a new time or decline the appointment. We're gonna hit confirm appointment. And when we do that, confirmation notices are sent out right away. This is the confirmation notice to the listing agent uh, by email, all the details of that confirmed appointment for them. And the confirmation notice to the showing agent is now gonna include the access details. We're gonna provide them with those secure showing instructions now that the appointment has been confirmed. Uh, so using showing time is also an added level of security, of course, peace of mind for your sellers, because only the access details are gonna be provided to, or I'm sorry, the access details will only be provided to agents who have confirmed appointments with you. Stephanie, yes. I have uh, two additional questions if you'd like to take those now. Sure. Donna is asking, can a showing agency appointment times that have already been booked by other agents? Uh, not by default. This is controllable uh, on the listing side, so you can configure your listings that way. There's uh, uh, the ability to allow overlapping appointments or not, um, and that is a setting that can be adjusted. By default, no, they won't be able to see. It'll just be uh, any appointment times that are already scheduled for the property, uh, they'll just be blacked out. So you won't know if it's a scheduled appointment or if it's a restriction that's been set up. All right, thank you. And one additional question. Um, if you are running late or early, what is the best way to notify the agent or seller? Also, is there a check-in option to notify you uh, we're there. 
Um, there's no check-in option, but the best way, we're going to look at, um, I'm going to go over our showing time messaging feature. So the very best way to notify the agent that you're running late or early um, is to use our showing time messaging feature. Great. So Thank you. you can message the agent directly. Yeah. And now Absolutely. we'll wait uh, to, I'll pose the rest of the questions that come in at the end. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Oh, great questions, actually. Thank you. Um, next, though, is, we're going to talk about go and show. So as a listing agent, you can also configure your listings as a go and show. And with a go and show, agents will still need to choose an available date and time to show the property. But once they do, those appointments will be confirmed automatically with no action on the listing agent's part. So this setting is popular with vacant homes on Lockbox. And the workflow here, when an agent, a showing agent goes to schedule, they click that schedule a showing button on a listing. Uh, on, a, on a listing set to the appointment type of go and show, as we can see at the top here, here's what it looks like. They'll hit schedule a single showing and uh, I still, again, they're going to choose an available date and time to show the property and fill in those appointment details. Uh, but once they do, that appointment's confirmed and confirmation notices are sent out to all parties right away. Um, the showing agent's going to see this green circle with a check mark that lets them know they're confirmed and we've provided them access to the showing instructions. So again, popular setting with vacant homes, new construction, uh, showing time is gonna do a lot of the work heavy lifting for you with this setting. It could also be used if you have uh, really flexible sellers that want to maximize the amount of showings that they can receive uh, because you're able to you know, set up your listing to fit their needs. You can set the restrictions, the required and suggested lead times as needed, and then set your uh, appointment type to go and show. Finally, there's a view instructions only. Uh, as a listing agent, you can configure your listings as view instructions only. This one's um, strictly going to be used for documentation purposes as well. Um, the system will, of course, gather that feedback for you automatically. Uh, this one's going to be used for uh, vacant lot, vacant land, or when you need to point the showing agents to someone else in order to schedule that appointment, such as a property manager. And the workflow here, uh, when that Showing agent clicks on schedule a single showing on a listing that is set to this appointment type. Um, again, they're not going to see a calendar. They're not going to fill in any appointment details. They will be presented with those showing instructions right away. Um, so again, great setting for vacant lot, vacant land, where an actual appointment doesn't need to be scheduled. They can go see it any time. Or if you need to point them to a property manager, for example, to set up the appointment, you can put the contact information of that property manager in your instructions here. Um, and then this way, you're gonna be able to view a list of all those agents who have clicked to view these instructions. You're gonna find those agents on the listing activity report, which we'll look at in a bit. Uh, so you can follow up on that interest. And then also, as I mentioned, the system, like all the other property types, and uh, will gather that uh, feedback for you automatically. All right, so those were the three different ways that you can configure your listings as a listing agent and how to schedule individual appointments. And next, we're going to go over building a buyer tour using Showing Cart, definitely one of our most popular features. You're able to add all your properties into a showing cart, a shopping cart, so to speak, schedule all those appointments at once, and send a nice summary off to your buyer. So we'll walk through this step by step here in Paragon. Let's say we're in or we're on a particular listing that we've pulled up in Paragon that we want to add to our showing cart and start building a buyer tour. So you're going to click on that same showing time button that you would to schedule an individual showing, uh, but instead you'll hit add to showing cart. And another tip for you here, this is a good tip actually. Um, I shouldn't say actually, all the tips are good. Uh, <laughs> um, but if you had existing showing carts created um, and saved, this button would look a little bit different because it would allow you to add that listing uh, to an existing showing cart that you're already working on or create a brand new one, which is what we're going to do here. Uh, the first step in creating a brand new buyer tour is to pick a date for your tour, associate it to your buyer, give it a description, and hit OK. Here's what the showing cart looks like. Uh, we're in the showing cart right now. You can see that listing we were on was successfully added. And I'll show you some additional ways to add more properties in here. One is by MLS number or listing ID, excuse me. Uh, once you put the listing ID, uh, IDs at the top, uh, just hit go and those will all be added for you. You also have some really nice integration in Paragon, which allows you to select 
multiple properties all at once right from your search results. And to do that, uh, just select those properties right here from your search results. Of course, this could be the search results of a prospecting search you have set up for your buyer. Uh, but once you make your selections, look to the top of the window, click on actions, and you'll see showing time under there. So again, make your selections, go to actions at the top, and then showing time. And that'll allow you to add all those properties at once. Also, if you need to find a property by its address, you can use this add listing stop button. And that just lets you search, you can search by uh, listing ID in here as well, but if you need to search by address, just enter in some or all of the address information, hit search and select that property when it comes up. And then to add your outside stops, such as meeting your clients at your office or a coffee shop in between, you can click this add other stop button to add any outside locations. And in this location, this example, excuse me, let's say I'll meet my clients at my office. So I'll go ahead and add my office location as a stop. You can see it was added to the bottom. The next step here, let's say we're done adding all the properties to our showing cart. So that's the first step. Step two is to get them in the order that you're gonna go see them. And you'll notice right below all the listings is gonna be a nice large map that helps you build out your driving directions. You can also click on this turn by turn directions button uh, and that'll just open up on the left-hand side and give you the time and the distance between each stop, which might be helpful when you start setting your appointment times. But first to get these properties in the order that you're gonna go see them, there's a few ways you can manually uh, shuffle them around and one that'll do all the work for you. Uh, for example, you can drag and drop them in any order. So to set my office as the starting location, I can hold down my left mouse key, drag that location to the top and let go. Uh, there's also these numbers on the left-hand side. You can use those to manually shuffle them around. But to make things nice and easy, once you have that starting point set, uh, just click on Smart Route. That's gonna do all the work for you and calculate the best route. So again, uh, based off your starting point, set that starting uh, point and then click on Smart Route uh, to build that uh, tour uh, route for you. All right, the third step here is to start setting your appointment times. And to do that, you're gonna hit that pick a time button next to each property in your cart. Uh, when you hit that pick a time button, this window is gonna open up for you to fill in the appointment details and then hit save. Again, you'll do that for each property in your cart, hit that pick a time button and set your appointment times. You'll notice on the right hand side, you'll be able to visually see all the appointment times that you chose. So you can spot the overlapping times as well as any errors in case you need to uh, make any corrections. Uh, you can visually see those here. And then once you're all set and ready to check out, so to speak, uh, at the top right hand corner, you'll click on that send request button and that will fire off all these appointment requests uh, right away. In this example cart that we're working on, you can see that I had two go and show listings indicated by the green circle with a check mark. So those are confirmed and I have access to the showing instructions. They were confirmed automatically for me. Uh, but two appointment required listings indicated by the red triangles, I'll need to wait for confirmation on those. And when you need to walk away from a showing cart that you were working on, I definitely wanna show you how you can get right back into it. So while you're waiting for those confirmations, to get back into uh, the showing cart you were working on, just click on showings in the left-hand menu and then showing cart. That'll pull up this calendar view for you here where you can then just click on the name of that tour from the calendar. And that'll bring you right back into it. So this example showing cart that we're working on, uh, you can see all the appointments are now confirmed and I'm ready to send this summary off to my buyer. And to do that, you'll see a print icon. You can certainly print this. It, there is an agent and a buyer version. We definitely recommend sending this to your buyer by email. Um, it's gonna send them a nice electronic version that they can open up on their mobile device and get driving directions. So once you click on that email envelope icon, um, you're gonna see this window here, which will allow you to tailor a nice message to them. You'll notice it's sent in a link format. So you can certainly copy and paste this link and send it to someone else if you'd like. Um, as an example, maybe for safety reasons, you want to send it to another agent in the office so they know where you're at for the day. And then here's what the uh, buyer tour looks like. Uh, it's branded to you, of course, as their agent, all the properties you're going to go see with the nice large photos and driving directions. And there's also this little car icon uh, on each property. So when your buyer opens this up on their mobile device and taps on that car icon, 
uh, that's going to go ahead and launch whatever the default mapping software is on their device and give them driving directions to your next stop. So uh, a nice feature if you are following each other. All right, and next uh, we're going to take a look at your agent setup. If you haven't gone to your agent settings before, highly recommend uh, you go to your agent setup and set your preferences here. We will. Um, or I'm sorry, to get there, just go to edit profile right from the dashboard or click on your name here. And at the top of the window, uh, I do wanna quickly point out this calendar sync button. So we're not gonna go over this in detail here, uh, but this is a popular feature in showing time. This calendar sync button here allows you to sync all your showing appointments to your personal calendar. So maybe your iCal, your Google Calendar, um, Outlook, et cetera. It's really easy to set that up. So I do wanna point that out. Uh, but to add or swap out your photo, you can just click that white arrow here and grab a photo from your computer and that'll be added. The top of the window is going to house your contact information as a listing agent. When we were scheduling appointments, that first window that comes up when you're scheduling appointments, again, that's your buyer agent information and uh, that screen will update whatever you enter there last. Uh, listing agent information is right here. I mentioned that you would have you would need to opt into receiving text messages um, and here's where you would do that make sure the phone type is set to mobile phone um, right here and you can opt in below next in listing agent preferences uh, here's some listing agent preferences that you can set such as your own default appointment mode for example um, you can set this to the types of properties that you list the most if you list a lot of vacant homes or new construction, you can set your default to go and show. Here's where you're gonna select how you wanna receive your notifications. So whenever we, by default, email and showing voice are always on. Uh, we definitely recommend at least two ways to re receive your notifications. Showing voice, um, a lot of agents, do like showing voice um, as an additional way to be notified, but some don't like the automated calls. So again, you have that choice and here's where you can uh, make your selections. Anytime you make changes to your listing agent preferences, uh, just a quick note that it's always gonna prompt you to save those changes. Uh, so just make sure you do. And um, it's, gonna want, it's gonna wanna know if we should apply those changes to all of your existing listings as well as new ones or just new ones. So for example, if you changed your appointment type from appointment required to go and show, should we apply that change to all of your active listings that are on the market right now, as well as new ones or just new ones? Showing agent preferences are next. Definitely some settings you will, you will want to check out as a showing agent that can save you those valuable clicks when you're scheduling your appointments and creating your buyer tours, such as setting your own default type and link through those appointments. Next, we're going to walk through how you can easily get our mobile app installed on your devices. Uh, with showing time, with our premium products, there is a username or password, but with the showing time here, um, there is no username or password. You're always going to sign in either through Paragon or our mobile app. And to get authenticated into our mobile app, you could go through the process of retrieving a code by email in order to get signed in, or you can do it this way. This is just a few less steps. So once you click that send, authentication link button. We're gonna generate an email to you that's gonna contain a link authenticated to your showing time profile. So you're not gonna to wanna to send that to anyone else but you. Go ahead and open up that link or that email, excuse me, on the device that you wanna install the app on. Once you tap on download the app, that's gonna bring you straight to where you need to go. It'll bring you straight to the app store. Go ahead and go through the steps of installing the mobile app on your device. And then when you're done installing it, don't try and sign into it. Instead, come right back here to the same email that we sent you and tap on login. That'll go ahead and sign you right into the mobile app uh, without needing to do any additional steps. Also, if you need to put our mobile app on multiple devices, you can just go through these exact same steps. Here's what our mobile app looks like. Um, it syncs seamlessly with the desktop. Um, there's this those three lines at the top, that's the hamburger icon, that'll always open up the menu for you. Um, so again, you can do virtually anything in the app that you can on the desktop. Also some additional features uh, that you can use in our mobile app, such as, um, so obviously everything you see here on the screen, you're gonna be able to schedule your appointments, confirm and decline appointments on the go, access your secure showing instructions. You can view and reply to feedback right away. 
Um, there's also, uh, as a showing agent, if you're, if the sellers are set up with the My Home by Showing Time app, uh, showing agents can hit a done button when they're done showing that property, which alerts the sellers that they can come home. Uh, there's also, um, you're also able to search for nearby properties. So if you and your buyers are touring for the day and they want to see some more homes, you can easily search for nearby homes, schedule those properties right there, and hopefully walk your buyers right into the door. All right, that was our Showing Time app. And next, we're going to take a look at Showing Time messaging. So this is uh, what somebody had brought up. How do I alert uh, the listing agent that I'm going to be running late? Here's what you'll do. Here's what you'll use. This is the best way to alert them. So with our showing time messaging, uh, you can chat with agents in your market or neighboring markets as well. Um, keeps all those conversations organized and in one central location for you. Um, you can also access your messages within our mobile app as well as on the desktop. And I'll show you both. So within our mobile app here, you're always going to see at the top right hand corner of every screen uh, that messages icon that will indicate if you have any new messages. Uh, your messages will be listed here in newest to oldest and anything bolded of course is unread and we try and make it nice and easy for you to locate an existing message thread so several different ways you can try and find it by address agent name listing id and then at the bottom of the window um, if you need to search uh, you need to chat with an agent you haven't messaged before in showing time just click that plus sign at the bottom of the window you'll be able to perform a search for them and send them a message. And then to access the same messaging system on the desktop here, uh, there, it's gonna be located right in the left-hand menu under messages for you. All right, next we're gonna circle back to listing setup. This is the last main section that we'll go over today. This is where we started the day uh, where I showed you how to add your secure showing instructions. But now we'll go through all the listing level settings, including how you can create your own feedback templates and how to add your sellers and give them access to the My Home Seller Experience. All right, back to listing setup. We'll click on a property here. The first thing I want to show you is how you can create your own feedback templates. Once you've created that feedback template, here's where you're going to select it on the listing. Uh, but first, in order to create that template, you can head over to feedback in the left hand menu, click on form and design settings, and then feedback form. So here's where you can create your own feedback templates. You can create as many as you need to. There really is no limit, uh, maybe one for a unique property, a certain property type, a certain area. And you'll also be able to use multiple choice and or free text questions in your surveys. All right, back to the listing worksheet. We'll just start at the top and work our way down. Uh, at the top of the window, if you have other active showable properties, you'll just see a drop down here to easily access them. Uh, you can set the appointment type at the individual listing level, of course. So if you have several uh, properties that are occupied, they need to be appointment required, but you have one that's vacant, you can set that one to go and show. Again, here's where you will select your feedback template if you want a different template used other than what you have set as the default. And the next is where you're going to configure your contacts here on the listing worksheet. So your co-listing agents as well as your sellers. Uh, co-listing agents, it's important to note um, in showing time, it could be a formal co-listing agent, um, but it could also be um, an assistant, an agent in the office, maybe covering you for vacation um, or a team member. Um, you're going to use that button to add any of those folks to your listing, basically anyone who's going to help you manage the appointments for that listing. And then to add your sellers, you'll click this add owner occupant button and fill in the name and contact information of your sellers. As long as we have an email address filled in here, once you hit save, that's going to generate an invitation to your sellers, uh, inviting them to create their own seller account, which we're going to to give them again access to our full seller experience, my home by showing time. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute here. Uh, but first, once you have your contacts added to the listing, here's where you're gonna make any adjustments if you need to. So this first column is who's gonna be able to confirm appointments. So if for any reason you don't want your sellers to confirm appointments, or maybe they don't wanna confirm appointments, uh, in this first column here, you would just uncheck all those boxes. Second column is who's going to receive uh, all the notifications of confirmed and canceled appointments. So all completely uh, adjustable uh, by the listing side. 
And that invitation that I mentioned that goes out to your sellers, here's what it looks like. Um, it's branded to you as their agent, of course. And uh, it is important to note that uh, your sellers don't have to create a seller account if they don't wish to. They, they will still be able to receive communications from you and confirm appointments if you have designated them to do so. But the real benefit for them to create this seller account, again, they're going to have access to our full seller experience. And to create that seller account, essentially, they're just going to be creating a username and a password, which allows them to sign in online on the desktop, as well with our mobile app for sellers, uh, My Home by Showing Time in the App Store, they can use our mobile app as well. And here's what it looks like. Here's the dashboard view, um, giving your sellers that instant insight into all their showing and listing and feedback activity. Also, you'll notice here under homes for sale, if you happen to have a seller who's selling more than one property, they will be able to view and manage all the properties that they're selling under that same seller account. Um, so sellers really rave about our home by showing time seller experience. So this is a great service that you can offer them. And then next up is appointment restrictions here on the listing worksheet. So here's where you're gonna set your appointment restrictions. Um, somebody had mentioned about allowing uh, overlapping appointments. Here's that setting I was talking about. Um, the default is no exclusive showings only, um, but if you do want to uh, notify the showing agents ahead of time that there's other appointments, you have the option to do so uh, using this setting. You can also set that required and suggested lead time as needed. And then to set your restrictions, to add them rather, you would click this add new showing restriction button. That'll open up a new window for you to add them. So you're definitely able to add multiple restrictions. Maybe there's painting on Tuesday from two to four, carpets are being changed on Friday from three to six. You can add all that. Also, you can set up a reoccurring restriction, uh, restrictions. Uh, for example, maybe Mondays from uh, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's never going to be any good for your sellers. So you can set that up as a one-time restriction or reoccurring restriction, excuse me. All right, and then finally, here's where you're going to add your secure showing instructions. Uh, we've talked about these a few times now, the real convenience of adding them right when that property is active and ready to show. Two parts here, access, access information and additional instructions. All right, the listing activity report, we'll look at this next. So this is a nice visual representation of all that showing and feedback activity, makes conversations with your sellers easy. We're gonna look at the agent version first, but before I do that, I do wanna point out um, a feature here, the attachments button. So this is another question somebody had when you have to make those COVID forms available to showing agents. So you can upload uh, up to 10 attachments to your listing. And those will automatically be sent to all the showing agents who request appointments with you. So um, a nice easy way to automate that, uh, the attachments, disclosures, your COVID forms, photos, uh, anything you'd like to upload to be sent to them. All right, and the listing activity report, uh, here's what it looks like. So a nice summary at the top, all your appointments in a bar chart. Uh, you're gonna see this uh, trend analysis here, this nice colorful pie chart is a trend analysis of all the feedback you receive. And then the feedback will be listed directly below it. We definitely do not publish feedback to your sellers by default. Uh, you'll be able to review it first. And once you have, just hit publish. That'll trigger a notification to your sellers that they have new feedback. So this is an example of not forwarding on your notifications. Whenever you receive feedback from a showing agent, whether it's by email or our push notifications, you'll always see a publish button that you can click on and that makes it available to your seller. All right, in the last section here, here's the listing activity details. These are all the agents who have clicked to view your instructions. Uh, if your listing was set to view instructions only, and then um, all the appointments here uh, for, for any appointment type, uh, all the agents are gonna be listed here. All the appointments in chronological order with all the details of how they were scheduled. If you click this little details button, gives you all the, that information, which is nice. And then if they've provided feedback to you or not. All right, and we'll look at the homeowner version next, uh, but I do want to point out another nice feature, popular feature of showing time, and that is this send notification button. And with this send notification button, you can easily send an update to all the agents who have shown your property within the last 180 days. So that's uh, an easy way to update them um, of a, uh, something that might interest their buyer, such as a price change. Also, there's this, yes, 
Oh, Stephanie, I just wanted to mention that we are just about at time and we do okay. have a few questions. Uh, so just let me know when you are uh, ready to uh, receive those questions. Thank you. Okay. Did uh, Do we need to end on time? Is this a hard stop? Well, we... We, this is being recorded, so I guess okay. if uh, if anyone uh, needs to leave right away, they certainly can, and uh, we could uh, we could run a bit over. Okay, okay, sounds good. Thank and you. I will I will breeze through the rest. We are almost we're coming to an end anyway. We're Thank you. Sure. All right. So the send notification allows you to again uh, quickly send an update to all those agents who have shown your property within the last 180 days. And then the homeowner version of the listing activity report, um, you can see it looks very similar to the agent version, but we definitely take out any sensitive information such as feedback that you haven't designated them to see. And then also the last section here, we're going to take out the buyer agent information, just the appointments. All right, help and training. I do want to uh, point you to our help and training site. Um, all the nice features, uh, popular features that I kind of pointed out that we didn't go over in depth. Here's how you can get um, instructions for them. You can search by any training topic. Like I mentioned, calendar sync, type in calendar sync here. It'll give you some nice, easy instructions to set that up. Um, and if you scroll down a bit, here's how you can get a hold of our support team. They're available to you seven days a week. Uh, we do have phone support and email support. We definitely recommend live chat. That's always going to be the fastest way to get yourself quickly connected with a live support technician. All right, and then very quickly, I'm going to go over um, uh, InfoSparks here. So with InfoSparks simple and intuitive design, you can compare up to four geographies at a time, as well as use My Areas to define your own local housing market. So the My Areas option brings you to a mapping interface where you can draw your own areas for customized uh, statistics. You can filter search results uh, by countless housing variables here, combinations here. Most values are predefined, but you can customize your own values uh, for certain variables, such as price range and square footage by clicking on that custom link right there. Uh, the bottom bar is where you're going to select your chart type, uh, where you're able to examine housing market metrics as counts, medians, and averages. These metrics, of course, represent the residential real estate topics that areas and variables pop against. And so in combination, they are gonna be the primary descriptors of what makes a market tick. Here is where you're gonna choose uh, your charted timeline and chart type either line or bar chart and share away. You can easily share results online, in print, via email, and even with live data widgets. Charts can be shared on social media, email, and embedded in your blog or website. Also for more in-depth, um, for more in-depth uh, in in -depth look into InfoSparks, we do host regular monthly webinars on market stats where our expert trainer, Aaron Dickinson, takes a deeper dive into this tool and its many uses. All right, well, that is a wrap for showing time. Uh, thank you again for having us. And I understand we do have some questions, so. Great, Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, and you may have covered off some of these topics, so I invite you to just uh, confirm if, if we already have. Uh, Joe had asked uh, if, we, um, if there is an automated way to advise your seller of showing requests as they come in through showing time, and I think you may have covered that. Yes, that's I'm, a, I'm so going to get everyone else to yeah, mute yeah, their yeah. Uh, mics um, because we're getting a lot of feedback. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, when we were on the listing worksheet, uh, that is where you're going to add your sellers under the contacts area and you're able to configure whether you want them to uh, confirm appointments or not after you've added them to the listing. Great, thank you. And our next question is, if you have a for sale by owner property, can you add them to the showing cart? Uh, if you can add any listing that is in Paragon to the showing cart, so, but you won't be able to manually add a listing if that's what's being asked, but if it's in the MLS and it's not, um, and it's not enabled for showing time, you can still add that, but it would have to be in Paragon in order for you to add it. Okay. Thank you. And but uh, you, well, I guess I guess I could say I'm sorry. I just want to nope. correct myself here. I there is an ad. You can add an outside stop, so you can certainly add that as a stop. 
Yes. So that, sorry about that. Thank you. And uh, Chris asks, why do appointments that are canceled stay in his calendar? Um, how do you remove cancel appointments? You know, when you set up your calendar sync, uh, you are able to choose what kind of appointments you want to show on your calendar. Um, so if you already have the sync set up, just go ahead and remove it and then go through the process of syncing, uh, setting up that sync again, you'll see that there's options that you can choose uh, what type of appointments you want to show on your calendar and what oh. time frame and how far back. Okay, thank you. And Helen is asking on my mobile app and drop down menu, uh, it shows the various items at the bottom in orange. There's a note upgrade. Do I click on this? Um, that is, uh, you can click on that to get more information. No worries, you're never going to be signed up for anything. Um, if you wanted to sign up, you would have to actually go through the process of putting in your credit card information to be billed for it. So no worries on clicking it just to get more information. But that's if you want to learn more about how to upgrade to maybe our appointment center service where we have our um, live appointment center specialists managing your appointments 24-7. Great, thank you. And a couple of more questions you may have covered. Uh, so just let me know, how do you delete buyers from showing cart? You may have how covered that. Oh, um, well, the showing cart tour, buyer tours themselves um, cannot be deleted. So you can certainly repurpose an existing one um, if you need to by just associating it to a different buyer and removing the properties and adding different ones. Um, but that's why we kind of, we set it up also in that calendar view so that when you go to view your showing cart tours, you're only looking at your current ones. But we do for historical purposes, they, they will remain in showing time. Thank you. And uh, Jerry is asking, uh, she is looking for the automated form uh, to complete, uh, not an attachment for COVID. I receive them on other listings when making appointments. Is that the PEED form? I think it might be. Um, I, that is something I would have to look into. I don't believe we're integrated with PEED in your market right now. So um, okay. I, would, I would need to look into that and I can certainly send you that information, Tanya. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm just circulating through the questions. Um, is there any plans for showing time to update sold prices? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Update uh, the sold prices. So the prices, uh, we, we do update prices in showing time. Okay. And all right, um, I think that is everything. Let me just see now. Um, oh, uh, Mike is asking, can we edit buyer feedback in case we wanna share feedback with sellers, but some comments might not be well received. And I think you had talked about reviewing the comments, but can they edit that feedback? Absolutely, yes, okay. absolutely. When you're reviewing that feedback, you'll be able to edit it as well before submitting it to your buyer. Or to okay. Yourself. All right. Oh, and a clarification on the sold prices. Uh, Lisa saying, are there any plans for showing time to sync sold prices with MLS so we can see what previous properties shown are sold for without having to get out of the app and log into Paragon? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I am not aware of any plans. I can certainly um, look into that. Um, I, I can certainly look into that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm to be honest, I, I, I don't know, but I can certainly check with the team. And again, I'll, I can follow up with you, Tanya, on that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. And we're going to do a prize draw, but I'm going to invite David Yetman uh, to close the session. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you. Hey, Stephanie, thanks very much. I picked up a few things myself, which is always good, but I want to definitely, um, extend a sincere appreciation to you uh, on behalf of NSAR and its members for this uh, session. We had uh, a lot of questions and that's always good. So thank you.